Hey everyone, this is First Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich with an update on the Arctic blast that's going to be heading our way. You know, we've been talking about this for over a week now, so it should not be a surprise to just about anybody who's been following me on social media or watching me on TV. We talked probably about two weeks ago about the polar vortex, a term you're going to hear almost ad nauseum here over the next couple of days. And what that is, is you can look on the map right now, you can see a piece of the polar vortex, not the whole polar vortex uh, moving south. What the polar vortex is, if you look at the top of the world, there's a semi-permanent area of low pressure which spins around the polar region. And like a hydra, there's these little arms or little sub-vortices that spin off and occasionally a piece of it or a chunk of it will drift to the south. Now a lot of times our cold air comes from up in the Arctic but it also comes from Siberia. We call this cross-polar flow and there's really cold air over in Siberia and that cold air is going to be diving to the south. You can see the temperatures, everything you see is white is below zero right now. I'm going to turn the temperatures off and just kind of show you the GFS model uh, and loop this a couple times and you'll see this Arctic air spilling south as a big surge of it begins to move down into the lower 48. And we refer to this, again, as cross-polar flow, and it really begins to bring that Arctic air down into our region. So I'll back it up, and you can see how this sets up perfectly here. You can actually see the polar vortex spinning over Hudson Bay there. I'll loop this a couple times. And notice these lines. These are what we call 500 millibar heights. They're straight out of Canada, and really over in Siberia. You could draw a line from Siberia all the way down into the southeastern United States. It's rare we get what we call a full hemispheric trough like that, but that's what we're seeing here in the next 24 to 36 hours. So it's really impressive to see this setup right you see right here. I mean, just amazing to see this source region for air is over in Siberia. And speaking of Siberia, let's hope the main chunk, because this area over here right now where my cursor is, that's 60 below zero Fahrenheit. So there's a ton of cold air over there. And if we get another big trough like this, boy, Watch out in the next uh, couple of months as we go through winter. It's just been an amazing setup. So what's going on right now? Let me show you a couple things. I'm going to throw up um, some of the data here. You can see the Arctic front is moving across the Ohio Valley. The coldest of the air is up here in the in the northern Dakotas, Minnesota, moving into parts of Wisconsin where they're going to kick off here in about 40 minutes. It's 5 degrees currently up there at Green Bay with the temperature falling below zero as the game goes on. Luckily we're ahead of the warm side of this front right now so temperatures have actually the warmest now than they've been since Thursday afternoon. Let me show you how things unfold. We'll start with the GFS model. It's done a really good job in the last several runs of kind of pinpointing this. Th these are temperatures and we'll actually show you a lot in the future here and you can see the Arctic front arriving. Uh, basically it looks like tomorrow morning it'll be moving into the region and the cold air will be filtered in. So the high temperature tomorrow is going to be whatever it is at midnight. Now this is 7 p.m. Tuesday night, 16 in Charlotte, or excuse me, Monday night. This is tomorrow night, basically 24 hours from right now. It's going to be 16 in Charlotte. So just to back this up a second, give you the drastic change, midnight tonight, probably 45 to 50 degrees. Even when you wake up tomorrow morning, Monday morning, it could be around 48 to 50. By about lunchtime, we're going to be in the mid 30s and by dinner time we're in the teens. This all happens Monday afternoon and by Monday night into Tuesday morning you wake up to temperatures in the mountains between 5 and 10 below zero and in the Piedmont and the Charlotte area single digits to about 10 above. The scary part about this is we don't warm up much on Tuesday. By lunchtime we barely get to 21 and by evening, we're back below 20 already. So the high temperature may struggle to get above 20 for a high, not a low, for the high on Tuesday. That is amazing cold. And it stays below freezing as we go into Wednesday morning. We'll be back down in the teens. And it may take us till late Wednesday afternoon, maybe even Wednesday evening to get back above freezing. So we're talking about 48 to 54 hours of below freezing temperatures, which means you need to take full precautions for pipes, pets, people, everything over the next 24 hours. That's not bad enough. The, the, the wind chills, the wind chills are going to be brutal. We've got a wind chill advisory for our entire area as well as a wind chill warning for the mountains and foothills. You look at the wind chills tomorrow afternoon, they drop below zero by Monday evening and by Tuesday morning, I suspect we'll see many school districts either delay or maybe just outright cancel because of the cold. Uh, wind chills in the mountains could approach 30 to 35 below zero and in the Piedmont about 10 to maybe 15 below zero. That will freeze flesh, basically frostbite, in about 20 to 30 minutes in the mountains, about five minutes. So kids standing out on the bus stop, not a good idea. 
I suspect a lot of schools will, will, will do, the, do the right thing here and probably at least delay until those wind chills kind of relax a little bit uh, later Tuesday. And notice they stay pretty low throughout the day. Just to give you per perspective here, this is what we call the SHREF. It's basically a, an ensemble model. It's all the 22 members of our GFS model. And you notice uh, as we go through tonight, we stay pretty steady here. And then we jump up briefly, it looks like, to 50 tomorrow morning. And then it's all downhill. By the time you wake up Tuesday morning, um, all the members, this is 22 members of the, of the SHREF, are below 10 degrees with an average temperature, the mean temp of about 8 degrees, and then only climbing to about 22 on Tuesday afternoon. We do recover a little bit into the 30s on Wednesday, but this cold air is going to be with us most of the week. It's going to take till next weekend this time for things to recover. So again, prepare yourself now. It's going to be a 24-hour uh, change in weather that we haven't seen around here in many years, and the temperature on Tuesday morning, if it gets to 8, that would be the first time in about a decade since 2003 that we've seen a temperature that low. So prepare now. Make sure you use safe heating sources. Watch out for carbon monoxide. Make sure you have everything ventilated correctly. And by all means, disconnect all your outdoor hoses. Throw them in a garage or shed and cover up your spigots. I did mine with covers. If you don't have them, take an old rag, an old t-shirt, wrap it around, put some duct tape on it. Just get something over it to protect it. You'd be surprised what just a little bit of covering can do. Of course, WCNC and NBC Charlotte will have you covered on air all day Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. You can follow updates online as well as our app, Weathercaster app. It's a great app, hour-by-hour -hour forecasting, all the videos and maps you could ever ask for. So please, stay abreast of the weather. I know a lot of folks always wonder, is this going to be a big deal? Are we hyping this? Hey, we haven't seen weather like this in 10 years. It's a pretty big deal. So please, please, please take it seriously. Cold will impact 100% of the people in our viewing area adversely. So it's an important issue. It's not a few snowflakes, which everyone gets hyped over and does little or nothing. This is cold that will impact every single person that's listening to this video. Stay safe, stay warm, and as always, stay tuned for updates throughout the next 24 hours.